if and when Kim Jong-un chooses to engage in constructive dialogue and actions, I am waiting. In the meantime, our very strong sanctions, by far the strongest sanctions ever imposed, and maximum pressure campaign will continue. Hopefully, everything is going to work out well with North Korea. And a lot of things can happen, including the fact that perhaps, and would wait, it's possible that the existing summit could take place or a summit at some later date. President Trump canceling the summit that was planned for June 12th in Singapore, but he is still leaving the door open for a meeting with Kim Jong-un. With that deal unraveling, it looks like the Nobel Peace Prize is going to be on hold, at least for now. Well, the president making this move that after North Korea released an aggressive statement, hear a portion of it. Vice President Pence made unbridled and impudent remarks that North Korea might end like Libya. Military option for North Korea never came off the table. Whether the U.S. will meet us at a meeting room or encounter us at a nuclear to nuclear showdown is entirely dependent upon the decision and behavior of the United States. Congressional Republicans, they were supportive of the president's move to cancel House Speaker Paul Ryan and House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy. They said Trump right to cancel the meeting and also to continue to pressure North Korea to give up its nukes. Not surprisingly, Democrats not as supportive. Senators Chuck Schumer of New York and Bob Menendez of New Jersey said this thing was doomed from the start and they questioned whether it was all for show. Here to talk about that and more, ABC News political director Rick Klein. Rick, um, I'm curious, inside the walls of the White House right now, are they embarrassed by the way the whole thing went down with North Korea or are they privately sighing relief because so many of the conditions they were hoping for weren't likely to be met here before that June deadline? I think the view here is that the president was right to stand up to Kim Jong-un. That's the view I think the White House is going to put out, that uh, they saw the bellicose behavior and, and words from Kim. Uh, they saw that he was unlikely to agree to the, the, the fundamentals that they need to get out of this summit, and therefore the president decided to pull the plug. I think there's also still maybe a little bit of skepticism as to whether this is a final, final cancellation. Uh, maybe, maybe this could come back online, depending on circumstances that develop later. And the president certainly left that door wide open for Kim to get back in touch with him. But he also seemed to threaten him with a potential nuclear war if his behavior doesn't improve. So where it lands, I don't know. But I think a, a lot of folks in the White House, uh, relief is an interesting way to think about it. You might be right about that. And I think even more broadly, they say the president was right to, to be a tough negotiator, at least, at least right now. I want you to take a listen to what uh, Senator Flake had to say, a Republican from Arizona. And yes, he is retiring. But nonetheless, I thought it was pretty interesting. Some untruths are not at all trivial. The effort to undermine confidence in the federal courts, federal law enforcement, the intelligence community, and the free press to perhaps the most vexing untruth of all, the supposed hoax at the heart of special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. He's speaking to the Harvard Law School class, but there's a sense he's speaking for many Republicans who may not want to say this out loud to this point because they have re-elections. What is your sense? I just get the vibe, Rick, that for whatever reason, this may have been a line the president has crossed in the last week or so with the whole Spygate story that has gotten even some of his tepid supporters more than uncomfortable. Well, uh, we should be clear on this supposed Spygate thing. There is no evidence in the public realm that even comes close to suggesting that a spy was placed by the Obama administration inside the Trump campaign. Uh, it just doesn't ha it just ha it didn't happen, according to anything we know. We know that uh, the Department of Justice is providing some information to Congress. If there is evidence, certainly it, it should emerge and it will emerge. It does not exist as of yet. As for Senator Flake, I, I, I don't think it is the majority view, at least how it's enunciated. I don't think he's alone. Uh, he may be the only one saying it in the high-profile fashion. But by and large, Republicans feel pretty good about President Trump's leadership. He has owned the Republican Party. He has taken it over in his own image, in his own policy prescriptions. Uh, there are far more candidates running to represent the Trump banner uh, in the midterm elections than against the Trump banner on the Republican side. So I feel like there is a, a growing accommodation toward him, not discomfort with. And I think you see it again with his allies on Capitol Hill who are willing to go to bat against Bob Mueller and against the investigation and for investigating the investigators rather than getting at the heart of what the initial charge about Russian meddling, Russian meddling was all about. To that end, though, beyond the political uh, calculation, Rick, 
the idea that law enforcement, federal law enforcement, and also Department of Justice and our intelligence agencies every day are being marginalized in terms of credibility. There's folks who are going to be here long after Donald Trump is gone, whether it be sometime this term, even if he's elected to a second term, whatever the case may be, is there a fear of the lasting damages, even within Republican circles, for those institutions? Yeah, you, you've heard it said uh, even out loud recently, what are these Republicans going to tell their grandchildren about this? And I, look, I think there have to be some concern about the institutional damage, but it is faded away in the interest of party lines for the most part. And it's one of those things, Richard, you never cease to be amazed by things. I thought there'd be more people like Jeff Flake by this time in the presidency if it, if it uh, continued like this. Instead, you've had, you've had a few. I'd mentioned Jeff Flake. Uh, in addition to that, Bob Corker, uh, Ben Sass, but Corker's also retiring. Sass has kind of let up a little bit. Lindsey Graham, John McCain's good friend is now golfing with the president uh, more than he's clashing with him. So I do think that uh, the president has moved the Republican Party uh, toward him far more than he has moved him against. Paul Ryan, uh, does the speaker survive to the midterms or do they make a move on him before then? Uh, the, the, the writing on the wall seems pretty clear right now. The, the only thing that's keeping Speaker Ryan, I think, in power now is that no one else could get to power by himself. So until someone gets a majority of House votes and majority of the Republican conference uh, on board, uh, I don't think it's, it, you're going to see a change. But as soon as that changes, as soon as the Freedom Caucus, that arrestive band of, uh, of conservatives, comes on board, presumably for the McCarthy uh, speakership, I think there is a very good chance that you'll see Speaker Ryan uh, step away before the midterms. Good stuff as always. Rick, I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thanks, Richard. Coming up next, everybody, some unconventional things happening at the Democratic Convention in New York today. Big names spoke, and we saw a few surprises as well. Republicans also gathering, but the GOP lacking the same star power. We're going to check in on both. Stay with us.